Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to the channel, my name is Richard. Not on a bikepack adventure today though. It is what's called an Audax. For those unfamiliar with what an Audax is, it's a long day riding a bike. So I'm here in Wales, 600 kilometers, seven and a half thousand meters of climbing over the next two days. Throw the uh, route up on the screen. As you can see, it's a figure of eight. So we've got 400 kilometres in the top half and 200 down below. So my plan is, once I get to the 400 kilometres, sleep in the back of the van for two, three hours, and then get going again. Well, what a morning so far. Started the ride without my bank card, so I said borrow some money. Also, where I carry my bank card was a spare battery for the GoPro. So I'm on a single battery. Left the GoPro in my pocket for about an hour and a half. Recording inside my pocket. <laughs> There's not much battery life left. So to try and capture what I can in the first 400 this ride. The best bits, yeah. That's what you want to see anyway, right? Now, if I'm crossing the camera before somebody else comes up the path, let's talk strategy for this ride. So my strategy is every 100 kilometers should try it. it should take me five hours 20 hours to get 400 done and of course i've got to, i'm not going that street i'm going much quicker than that but i've got stopping times as well to manage so the 200 kilometer mark trying to get there for 4 pm that would have mean that i've done the first 210 hours 200 kilometers in 10 hours so if I can just do that again, it will mean I can get back to the van and uh, the 400 kilometre mark, get my head down a few hours sleep, around 2am. It's a nice target to be had. And then that leaves me with, well, 20 hours to do 200 kilometres and sleep, eat, everything else. Seen this in so many videos over the years. Finally here myself, the Ben High Bridge. So I am right in the Welsh mountains and I forgot the name already but there's a very popular climb just up there. Beautiful scenery here in the Welsh mountains descending towards bits of Coed. I'm sure they're not pronouncing it right but I've heard it pronounced that way plenty of times. Been a great ride up to now. Um, shall I show my bike? So today I'm on the Sonda Calibri Titanium road bike. Straight away you might think well, you're not carrying much and that's right everything's quite compact for this 600 because it had lots of climbing so i've got some spare clothes in there just in case the weather turns and i mentioned earlier i'm going to sleep in the back of a van so second switch over clothes something to eat this evening so i felt i didn't need to bring too much won't be no plans to sleep overnight anywhere in a field or anything so it's just a few bits of clothing, got a couple of water bottles in there, two cat eye lights, Omni 5, 
exposure tree saw there. Got a new seat post from uh, Dedder, Dedder Zero number one. And you might have noticed I've also got some new aero bars. These are ones from Profile Design, the Legacy 2, this first ride with them. The only thing you can find a little bit annoying is I've got nowhere to put my quad lock at the moment. So, nowhere to mount my phone. I need to sort that out. I think I'm going to make my own bridge, aero bridge. I'm going to try to. Um, I've been watching a video showing how easy it can be done. So, I'll give that a try and uh, report the results of how successful or not that is. Apart from that, everything else is pretty usual on my setup. Uh, SKS Race Blade Pro front mod, uh, back mount guard, no front mod guard. Got a pump from Two Peak. A Polaris bike wear strap holding one of the uh, tubes on. And got another tube hiding away underneath the saddle. Food bits and bobs in there in the uh, Rock Brothers top tube bag. I say lots of climbing, lots of distance, so I didn't want to be carrying loads of shit around. So, uh, Lightweight is the key. And I forgot to mention the uh, front lights I'm carrying on today. Got a new one from Exposure Lights. It's the Toro Mark 2 or 3. So we're going to try that out this evening. Towards the evening time, 285 kilometers done, about 320 is on to go. If the pace through the evening is continues to be as it is right now, I'll be well pleased because it's been pretty flat since the last control at Welsh Pool. But we're just pinning away down there, a road at the moment. See a bit of traffic. Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to day two of this 600 km to Audax. Just left Carpool Bangor. It is bang on eight o'clock. I've had a less than an hour and a half sleep, I think. I lay in there, well, laid rather. I had about three hours stationary, shall we say. Got up for pee about four times. I threw up last night at two o'clock in the morning, eating something which didn't agree with me. Yeah, not very good. And woke up this morning, flat back tire. So today's route uh, takes me to New Quay, not that one. Yummy, look at that. Outdoor look, folks. I tell you how I feel inside. Shagged. And if you're an American viewer, I'll translate. Fucked. 
I'm going to be bringing out a big gun soon. Having an energy gel. Absolutely knackered. That's a huge amount of climbing. I'll be glad to get this one done. I think ep yesterday's episode of Thrown Up didn't help. But luckily, you know, my gut was okay. Didn't throw up too bad, but still, perils are turning. I'm in good time. You know, just make it through. Another 130k, I think it is. I am the one and only can't take that away from me Set cheesy music is pumping into my ears to try and cheer my mood up a bit I got rid of the cool dirty beats and replaced it with um, Sesame Hawks Wham S Club 7 I just had a uh, unscheduled petrol stop Bit of a sugar fix. Monster energy drink. Full fat coke. Got some Welsh cakes. They're a bit of sugary, a bit of carbs. And for dessert, a tin. Not onion rings, pineapple rings. They're supposed to be good for you, full of energy. So I've got some of those into me. Hopefully that perk me up until we get to. Uh, Carman, Carmenfinshire, Carmenfinshire. It's just up the road, just up the road anyway. But I couldn't hack anymore. I was like, stop quickly. I'm currently the Lantern Rouge as well, which uh, you know, if there was like 80, 90 people there, I'd be really proud of this. But there's six of us running this, maybe seven. So still a Lantern Rouge. I'll enjoy it while it lasts. There's also been one casualty who did not finish. Um, I'm not sure his surname. Matt, he was uh, the fastest winner at LEL in 2022. But he did a knee injury or something near basically co -ed. So that's kind of middle of yesterday afternoon, I guess. Until I get back to Capel Banger and over that line, the job is not done. <laughs> I don't really know where I am right now, but this is beautiful, this. And again, it's been long sections of downhill and... Celery! Oh my god, I'm singing to Bewitched. It's doing good for mental health right now. <laughs> so I've gone through Carmarthen. Landevery is up next. It's less than 40k away. The go-to place really in Carmarthen to get something to eat was the Texaco forecourt. And I tell you what, the baguettes in there in there were gigantic. Uh, 2 dollars one huge baguette. So I went ham, cheese and pickle. Oh, it was wonderful, really needed it. Thus far that energy gel is still in the top tube bag. So hopefully my mood will stay as it is until the end of this ride. Which uh, is only a handful of hours away now. I do hope you've enjoyed the journey with me so far. The uh, countryside here in Wales never fails to amaze. It's beautiful. <laughs> now that I finish uh, listening to and sing along to five, <laughs> didn't we let me just tell you, just run alongside, which, well, what I believe is the edge of the Brecon Beacons. I'll pop a link in the corner screen to of a tour series of Wales must have been 
2020 or 2021, I think it's 21 actually, it sounds right. I went up to a beautiful spot in the Brecon Beacons, surrounded by sheep and ho wild, wild horses and absolutely stunning it was. And of course it's not called the Brecon Beacons anymore is it? I don't know what its new name is, perhaps I'll uh, pop it down in the corner of the screen. <laughs> familiar sound it's going up the farmers climb uh, struggling at 16 17 percent and then a little bend in the road saw it and went no thanks I'm just gonna push the rest of it so sometimes you you know better off not going to the bed too much oh it's good in it quick wipe down cover up because it's gonna be a long descent Now, I don't know if I told you on camera, but my target time uh, for this weekend, kind of well, based on waking up this morning, was to get this done by eight o'clock. We've just, just got half seven, and there's at least six kilometers to go, so it's looking pretty good. With an Audax, there's nothing quite the same. It's finally, finally, finally seen that checkered flag showing the end point. And just ticking down, you just roll it in and you look ahead and you go, oh, the white building. God, wow, what a route that was. And the time, you can see it, 20 past eight. Excellent, and that's an hour and 40 to spare. Oh, he oh, has beat me. Ah, save route, save ride. Hey folks, how are you doing? Good morning. It is 10 to 10. Great night's sleep. I'm the last one to leave the car park. So, yeah, great ride. Had a great experience. I recommend that. Uh, if you're into Audax already or you're a bit of a mountain goat and you don't mind all the hills and things, come and do the live a little bit of everything. Hopefully Andy Cox will run it again next year. Definitely not for beginners and maybe if you haven't been doing Audax that long or you don't like the climbs, probably wouldn't recommend it, but if you love the climbs, um, yeah, go and do it. It's not especially steep. There are a few sections, of course, like any of these Audax rides, there's always a few kickers in there, but mostly it's quite rolling. It's just a lot of long, gradual uh, Welsh hills and mountains, and you will be impressed by the landscape, um, I'm sure. Um, what I really helped yesterday as well was just because I was think I was overthinking the, the I had lots of thoughts running through my head throughout this entire event. I'm like, oh god, I've got to move to 300 to 600. Can I do it? And then I started panicking after I was feeling sick and unwell. So how the second day panned out was instead of going out in the, the same kit that I've been wearing throughout Saturday and into the wee hours of Sunday morning, fresh set of clothes. It was just a completely different experience. It was just like going out two back to back rides. So that really helped. It's the first time I've done that. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you've not subscribed already, you know what to do. Just hit that button. Give the video a big thumbs up. And I shall see you in the next one. <laughs>